Okay. So this is going to be a recap on the meeting that we had on January 9th, 2019. It's Wednesday. Uh, first thing we talked about was office interactions. Again, if uh, you can't perform a stop for whatever reason, you need to call either me or the office before you go ahead and take off. Reasons why you're going to call the office versus me is again, if the customer refuses service, uh, time to appointment, they're not home, it's an inside only, something similar to that aspect. You're going to want to call the office, they're going to be answer to that. Um, if it's a treatment issue, uh, equipment failure, you don't have the right product, things like that, you're going to need to call me and we'll talk it through. Again, if you can't treat, you can't treat. Uh, we'll go ahead and reschedule that, but there's lots of ways to skin a cat. So uh, lots of times I'll be able to, uh, between the two of us talking about, we'll be able to figure something out to what you can get the job done uh, correctly. Uh, again, sometimes the office may call for ETAs, ask about a previous stop, um, if something's changed, ask to add a stop, things like that. Key to remember is that we're all a big team. They're there to assist you. You're there to assist them in things that they do uh, from a customer standpoint. So we need to make sure that we communicate respectfully. Um, don't, don't cop an attitude with them. Don't get rude with them if they're asking you a question. They're not there to tell you how to do your job or what you're doing is wrong or whatnot. They're just there to uh, ask those questions and maybe instruct when it comes to um, what to do at a stop. Like, uh, go ahead and leave in 15 minutes or she's going to be there in 10, stick around or... XYZ stuff like that they're never gonna tell you how to perform a treatment and if they do if they get an ad to with you with you if they get rude with you make sure you let me know but um, that's it's not necessarily gonna happen just make sure that we're having a pleasant conversation with each other again we're all a big team we uh, we need to support each other as one uh, the next thing is make sure you get back to them in a timely manner uh, this is something that doesn't always happen. Uh, we forget our phone. We don't always look at it, things like that. Um, but make sure that if you leave your phone in the truck, you're always checking it in between stops to make sure that I didn't call, the office didn't call, and make sure that uh, you give them a call back. Uh, if they did. Next thing is time at stops. Again, like I stressed in the meeting, this isn't negotiable. This is it. This is what we need. Um, Take a minute to take a look over this slide again. 10 minutes if it's GPC or rodent only. Increase to 15 with a GPC and a rodent. The customer's home, that's obviously going to help dictate as well. <clears throat> but these are just some rough times about how long it may take at a home. Um, so go ahead and take a look at this slide. Again, uh, the minimum, the minimum there is 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, depending on what we're doing. And, and that's not negotiable. If we're so familiar with the home that we're running around it because we're so familiar we're probably missing something and we're just getting lucky that it hasn't been caught yet i'm tired of getting lucky because eventually our luck's going to run out so let's make sure we're being thorough uh, walk around the house in an alternate way uh, there's only two ways to walk around the house you always do one way maybe when you go do your web head walk the other way see if you notice something different um, Maybe take just an extra walk around just to make sure, double check, kind of like you do when you cut wood. Measure twice, cut once. It's the same kind of thing here. So, uh, Next thing is insurance. If you haven't filled out your insurance yet, make sure you do so. Um, if you don't have it filled out by Monday, I'm going to be calling you guys personally and making sure that that gets done. So, um, If you have any questions, give me a call. If you need a computer, you can always come into the office. I can assist you. Chelsea assisted a lot of people today. Uh, let's make sure that we get that taken care of. Uh, again, time off. I'm off Thursday or Friday. So if you're watching this video next week, the slide doesn't really matter to you. All right. Chemical incident protocol. Each of you should understand how to clean up a chemical spill. The three C's. Control, contain, clean. Essentially, if you spill a bottle and it's spilling Controlling it would be picking up, stopping the spill. Containing it would be using the floor absorbent um, inside of your um, spill kit and or if it's like bait stations or bait boxes or bait blocks that have... Hold on a second. Hey, Anthony. Yeah, hey, so I was just curious, um, did you want your wife on your insurance or no? 
Okay. Tori, Tori had asked because apparently she was on the last time, so she just wanted to confirm. Okay, awesome. Then we'll go ahead and I'll let her know not to worry about it. All right, thank you, sir. Bye. Okay, chemical incident protocol. Uh, in the event that there's a chemical spill, make sure you give me a call when it's safe to do so. Again, uh, make sure you control and contain the spill before you give me a call. Uh, if you got, you got it on yourself or in your eyes, make sure you flush your eyes, clean your skin before you give me a call. And then give me a call and we'll talk about it. Um, but again, everybody should understand the three C's. Control, contain, clean. Um, and what to do in certain instances. So uh, if you get it on your skin, make sure you wash and rinse your skin immediately. If you ingest it for some reason, uh, like chowing on a bait block <clears throat> or something, go ahead and give poison control a call uh, and see what they recommend. Um, make sure not to inhale products. If a mask is something that you need and or want for when you're doing dusting or you're doing aerosol, talk to Matt. We have some in the back. Um, and if they run out, Matt will let me know and I'll get more. If you get some in your eye, flush your eyes. Water, saline solution, but you want to go ahead and flush your eyes uh, immediately with water. And again, if for some reason we get an accident or we spill and it goes into a public water source, we need to contact the local authorities. Um, but the three C's are, are also pivotal. Whenever we have a spill, whether it's dust, um, it's granular, it's contract blocks, it's suspend, whether it's contaminated or not, we want to do the best to clean it up. And for that, we got to use the three C's. First, we control the spill. Um, if a bag of granular is spilling, pick up the bag, make sure it doesn't spill. If suspended is spilling, make sure we pick it up or do something to stop the spill. Then we contain it. That's what our um, the floor absorbent is for in the spill kit. Uh, make sure that that goes around. If you don't know how to use floor absorbent, ask somebody, ask me, ask Matt. We'll teach you. It's very simple. Uh, and there are instructions on the bag. Uh, and then once you do that, then you go ahead and clean it up. That's what the broom is for, to go ahead and sweep the floor absorbent over the liquid so it absorbs, and then you can sweep it up and dispose of it properly. If it's granular, you sweep it up. If it's contract blocks, we want to pick it up. If it's dust, we sweep it up. Uh, so understand how to properly contain and control the products that you're using. Another good thing is read the labels. The labels are also going to tell you what to do in the event that you get it on your skin, you ingest it, stuff like that. So make sure that we're reading those labels and we're understanding what's on them. Because not only for us, but for some reason, if a customer, we don't know they're there and we spray a customer or um, a dog or something, we know, understand how to use that and how to um, communicate to the customer on what we should do. So. All right, so the next uh, slides again, I'm just going to pause for five to ten seconds uh, and you can go back and pause the video to read the information. It is important to know that with termites, uh, since they consume their food, if there's frass or sawdust, that's not generally going to be termites. And again, the workers are what go ahead and consume the wood. The soldiers can't eat themselves. The, the queen could if she could move, but like you saw in the picture, um, she's kind of large and she doesn't really do anything but uh, give birth and reproduce. So she doesn't generally, um, so she can't go out and feed for herself. So. The workers take care of her, they clean her, they feed her, that kind of stuff. And that would be it. If you've already seen me, you've already seen me. Uh, thanks, guys, and we'll see you next week.